And I swear, guys, I could prepare the stream for like five hours and it wouldn't matter. I would still be late. It's just a part of me. It's who I am. It's who my ancestors were. You know, come to think of it though, my mom was not really late for stuff usually. And if she was, she blamed me for it. I'm talking about uh, the infamous Twitch streamer trans person who people are calling like the dear Twitch staff is what is what the title they've gotten. But they're actually a Twitch ambassador. And you can actually find uh, this description of them. They have ties to the ADL. I don't know if you guys knew that, but you knew you know like the way that they speak and how they were saying that um well you guys will see the clip in a minute, but that all that gamers are a lot of them are white supremacists. Like with how they talk, I knew something was up. My guess was that they were part of Antifa, but it turns out they have ADL ties. This is I believe off of ADL's site. It says Steph, ferociously Steph, lore. I, I think I'm saying that right, but I'm not sure. Loher? Lore? Whatever. Is a professional community leader. Professional. Professional, okay. Keep that in mind when I show the clips after this. Professional. Okay, so that's a quick little intro from uh, the ADL for who that Twitch S Safety Advisory Council is. So let's go into what their position is. It says, the Safety Advisory Council will inform and guide decisions made at Twitch by contributing their experience, expertise, and belief in Twitch's mission of empowering communities to create together. The Council will advise on a number of topics, including drafting new policies and policy updates, developing products and features to improve safety and moderation, promoting healthy streaming work-life balance habits. What does that mean? How are they... What are they gonna do? Go into streamers streams and tell them to drink water? Protecting the interests of marginalized groups. Oh, oh, so anyone but white people? Is that what that means? Anyone but white men gets gets protection? That doesn't seem very fair. I think everyone should have their interests protected. I thought we were about equality, but I'm all for, all for, all right. you know, using their, their logic of being about equality. I thought that's what we were about. Identifying emerging trends that could impact tr the Twitch experience. So basically, the Safety Advisory Council um, influences policies and drafts new policy and policy updates, is what it says. And that is the dear Twitch staff person. That's how everyone's regarding them. Um, that's what their position is. They can't actually change the rules, but they do have an influence and can draft policies. So they're not final, they're not published, but they're drafting them. <laughs> You've been streaming for more than an hour. Please drink water. You're so right. Thank you for advising me on a healthy, balanced streamer lifestyle, Altar of Kez. Let's go over that person's accomplishments. What, what did they do to qualify being a Twitch... Uh, safety advisory council men woman I don't know anyway council them this is what they accomplish and what makes them qualify to be in that position this is from their own twitch profile okay accomplishments created the first trans pride flag on twitch platform in 2016 so let me get this straight their accomplishment is taking paint, MS paint, and selecting the blue color, making a line, selecting the white color, making a line, and then selecting the pink and making another line, and then rinse repeat until the flag is done. That's their accomplishment. I'm pretty sure kindergartners have better accomplishments. Like at least they can draw dinosaurs or something instead of just drawing lines of color. That's an accomplishment? What? Why would you even put that? The lack of self-awareness. Like, guys, it's not transphobic. I'm just saying it could be any flag. Like, if I was bragging about... Guys, how would it look if I was bragging about, like, accomplishments? Made an American flag once and posted it on YouTube. Like, it's... it's 
Red, white, red, white, and some blue with some white dots. Come on, it's not that hard. I'm sorry guys, I shouldn't I shouldn't have spoken out. They're much more accomplished than I. They they drew colors in lines on Twitch. Four years live streaming full time, still here going. Made Femme Ferocity, an initiative team for female empowerment and heroes of the storm. What does that mean? Like, do they just like turn to each other and pat themselves on the back and go? Good, good job! Good job on being a woman! Woo! And th they just do that in between every round, or? Like, they use all these buzzwords, but do you guys ever stop to actually ask what the fuck does it mean? Like, what does it mean? And that's kind of weird, like, I'm not gonna lie, they're trans and they're the ones that make the female empowerment. I don't know, I feel like... I'm not trying to be transphobic, but I feel like that's kind of weird. Maybe maybe they should create a trans empowerment team in Heroes of the Storm. You know what I mean? Create and organize a social justice... I mean, like, literally, this person's a social justice warrior. Uh, create and organize social justice-related campaign against the inclusion of voice chat to Heroes of the Storm. So they said that there should be more pings in the game. Like, literally, a button that goes ding in the game. Wow, let's give them a round of applause. Chemistry, biochemistry graduate. Keynote speaker at TwitchCon 2017 on moderation. Well, you know, you could put that there. It just makes it sound like a little bit like a resume. So yeah, that's that's what they have to brag about. I'm sure you guys are, are just wondering and asking, what does a person with such accomplishments, such a high achiever, what do they do on their stream? I'm sure they have some great epic gameplay and positivity and just general intellectual content, right? Which is safety council. No, this is what they do on stream. They LARP like a deer. Greens in chat, tasty greens. Tasty greens for me. Oh, thank you. Mmm. Maybe it should be tasty pills. You know, isn't it wild that the, that the Twitch algorithm They're furry. is promoting me for getting harassed? <laughs> Don't why? Why is being a furry and being Twitch safety council allowed? I feel like it's a direct conflict of interest to allow a furry to be the safety council. Like, guys, I'm gonna be honest, if I were partnered on Twitch right now, I wouldn't feel safe. Raise your hand in chat, for those of you who go on Twitch, raise your hand in chat if you feel less safe now that ferociously Steph is part of the safety council on Twitch. Raise your hands if you feel less safe now that there's a furry in charge of your safety talking about uh, marginalized groups and uh, you know marginalized means that if you're a white male you don't count um, they're dehumanizing you uh, and humanizing anyone who is more ethnic than you oh I see a lot of hands in chat okay I don't know that's how I would feel too if I if I were a twitch streamer I would feel less safe with this person like they make me feel uncomfortable with how they're acting and it's not because like they're trans, it's because of them acting like they're a deer. Trust and safety. This is so fucking disgusting. Like, they're literally cooming on stream! Twitch Safety Council is cooming on stream! There are kids watching this! It is not age restricted. Twitch is like a free for all. Anyone can go on it. No need for ID. You're you don't have to be 18. Imagine your kid is just fucking watching this shit. They're literally cooming as a furry on stream. Why do they allow this is this is your safety council? A furry cooming on stream? Thank you. You know, I think the biggest argument for socialism is showing that video. I think that video will single-handedly convince anyone that we need global healthcare, or at least like in the country, 
so that people have access to therapy, so that people have access to psychiatrists for free. Because clearly there are some people that need help that are not getting the help that they need. So, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of feeling the burn at this point after watching that video. <laughs> Like that has to be the biggest argument for it, ever. I'm not I'm not a Bernie bro, but if you wanna argue for socialism, just like play these videos. Tell me they don't tell me how this is this is safe for the how are they the safety council when they themselves are not safe? Like they do not seem mentally stable. <laughs> Leaning down a little bit. Why is this allowed on Twitch? It's nice about forest creatures, is that though? It's also where they give you feedback on your scratches. And they're pretty sensitive to scratches. You know what I really like? Justin Wang's take on this. He said on Twitter, as you're thinking about a girl who didn't text you back yet, just remember that the Twitch. The, the Twitch Deer staff person has a personal head scratcher. This is their partner, I'm pretty sure. So scratches in different areas. Making them coom on stream. Like, tell me this wouldn't turn a furry on. This is erotic. This is, this is over the top. This is... I don't know why Twitch thinks this is safe or promote safety. I do not feel safe. I don't think anyone else feels safe watching this. If anything, I feel violated watching this. I feel dirty after watching this. So how the hell are they the safety council? Twitch uh, safety advisory council, how? So this, what I'm gonna show you guys next is the infamous clip that got this all started like why everyone was outraged and then it left to kind of like a spiral of just like people digging and finding more and more and more stuff that was just um vile oh, like no. we just witnessed so this is the clip oh, no i just i'm just not cool with white supremacy y'all it's really not that i think a lot of you gamers are actually white supremacists sorry just a fact of how I feel, which is not cool. No, I just... And they're saying that a lot of gamers, so people on that platform, are white supremacists. So how does Twitch think that their safety council saying that promotes them in value, especially because they are safety council? How does that promote their site? That makes it seem to other people that don't know any better, they're like, oh my God, this Twitch staff or like Twitch Trust and Safety Council, which I don't know why it doesn't qualify as Twitch staff, but whatever. Twitch Trust and Safety Council, so they advise Twitch, they draft new policies, and they're saying the people on their site, gamers, are a lot of them are white supremacists. The, a person ignorant is gonna see that, see their position and believe them and be like, oh my God. So that means Twitch has a lot of white supremacists. What, does Twitch think that's gonna bring their site up in value? It's not, it's gonna bring it down in value when your safety council is saying that there's white supremacy on your site. Uh, and a lot of it at that, cause Twitch is full of gamers. It's mostly gamers. It has some creative elements, but it started as being, Twitch.tv started as being gamer. Gamer streams, gamers watching other gamers, and it's still, mostly that with some other IRL cooking artsy BS thrown in too. So I don't know how they're letting this person get away with that. And the worst part is they are having power trips about it as well. They're so unapologetic about it. Stay mad. Stay mad, haters. I'm right. I'm right. Oh, stay mad. Stay mad. They're right. They're right that the gamers a lot of them are just white supremacists because how how dare they speak in voice chat? They must be white supremacists. Um, if you didn't know, they also spoke out against the whole uh, voice chat thing and uh, how it's oppressive to have voice chat in professional gameplay or whatever. So yeah, if you want to talk to your teammates and dare you be white, 
Mm. Sweetie, your white supremacist. But I'm hanging in there. And how much power and, they uh, have. I'm not going anywhere. I have power. See. They can't take it away from me. Literally. And honestly, you know, I, the, the, these, there, there are some people that should be afraid of me. Um, and that they are. Listen, I'm afraid of you, but for a different reason. Because I, I represent, uh, moderation. And That's not why people are afraid of you. There, it's something else. That, uh, moderation and diversity and I'm gonna come for hurtful, harmful people. If you're a really shitty person, I'm gonna stand up against you. What is a shitty person to them? Let's go back on what they said before. A shitty person to them is a lot of gamers because they are white supremacists. So, and it's also bad for marginalized people and oppressive to have voice chat. So if you are a gamer who likes voice chat, that she's probably talking about you. They're probably talking about you and they're gonna come after you does that make you feel safe guys i don't know how's safety furry working out for you guys you feel safe uh, moderation and diversity and gonna come for hurtful harmful people if you're a really shitty person i'm gonna stand up against you period and uh i'm twitch is endorsing me to do that so they said it themselves twitch is endorsing them to do that that's my magic i put the ac back on i am sweating bullets it gets so hot in here in the summer, guys. I'm sorry. After all of that power tripping and this uh, safety furry being unapologetic, saying that, you know, there's all these white supremacist gamers and that voice chat is oppressive and that they're going to go after people who are oppressive. Uh, they then admit, safety furry admits, to having no power after going on a power trip. Get a load of this. I really have zero power right now. I have no idea how much power I have. And at the moment, it's zero. I might have more later, but like right now, all I can tell is I'm supposed to say uh, what things I think are maybe bad ideas, and then Twitch will like maybe act on them. I'm not Twitch staff. So there you have it. They're saying that they actually have no power they don't know how much power they have, but before, you know, they were going on a power trip. Also, I found this tweet of them. You guys remember this meme? That I have a vagina tweet, and then people were doing satire of it, and taking a photo of themselves at the hospital saying they have a vagina. This is from the Safety Furries Twitter. Just like cutesy, casually, ooh, ooh cut off your balls. Like, again, not trying to be transphobic, but the way that they phrase it, that they're like, ooh, I got my balls cut off. It's like, yes, in America, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to transition to be another gender, but to like romanticize it and make it like cutesy, because it's a super harmful surgery in the sense of how invasive it is. Like you can develop a lot of painful issues for months at a time from getting uh, gender reconstruction surgery for, for your genitals like people often regret doing it because how much pain they experience having to dilate themselves which means sticking a phallic object up them several times a day every day or else they develop infections and things like this and have hairballs come out um that's just the nature of how it is and it's a very unpleasant experience for trans people so and i know that from seeing that around so to see them like romanticizing like ooh, ooh just got just got got my dilator it's like oh my god why are you romanticizing it if your testicles make you depressicles it's time to put them to resticles scissor emoji cherry emoji okay emoji um excuse me that's white supremacy report to the adl uh thumbs up heart rainbow heart bunch of hearts i'm alive kind of a weird thing to go ooh woo over you know so yeah that's basically what i have to say about the safety advisory council and the twitch ambassador twitch is going downhill this is who they have on their team who drafted these people on their team whose decision was that which twitch staff decided this and are they regretting it are they regretting having the safety furry